Every year, from late April to early July, wholesalers crowd into the early morning auction at the Nanfangao Fisherman's Wharf to bid on the day's catch. This gleaming fresh ocean harvest comes mainly from the waters around the Diaoyutai Islands. The fisheries agreement designated zone Captain Pan refers to is a maritime region defined in the Taiwan-Japan Fisheries Agreement signed April 10, 2013. Under the deal, fishing vessels from both sides can operate within the designated zone without being subject to the jurisdiction of the other side, while a smaller area is under joint management by the two governments. The combination of these zones lies south of 27 degrees north latitude and north of Japan's Yaiyama Islands and Miyako Islands. Taiwan's fishing boats can now operate in this region free of interference by Japanese government vessels. This is the first fishery agreement reached between Taiwan and Japan concerning their respective overlapping exclusive economic zones after 16 rounds of negotiations since 1996. It represents a major breakthrough in efforts to resolve the two sides' four-decade-long fishery dispute. The agreement intentionally does not prejudice the two sides' respective sovereignty claims. Throughout the negotiation process, the Republic of China maintained its stance of safeguarding its sovereignty while securing fishing rights. In other words, fishing rights did not come at the expense of territorial sovereignty. In the agreement, a clause was included to ensure it did not affect or prejudice the ROC's claim of sovereignty over the Diaoyutai Islands and surrounding waters. Since the agreement was signed, Taiwan's fishermen have been able to operate free of interference in an expanded region of 74,000 square kilometers, more than twice the area of Taiwan. Included in this region are three sectors, colored purple, with an area of 4,530 square kilometers, which extend beyond the ROC's temporary enforcement line. The agreement has boosted the potential catch of Taiwan's fishermen. For the ROC, this represents a milestone of advancing fishery rights without compromising territorial sovereignty. The Diaoyutai Islands lie northeast of Taiwan proper in the East China Sea, comprising five uninhabited islands and three coral shoals, with an area of 6.16 square kilometers. The largest of the islands is called Diaoyutai and is under the administrative jurisdiction of Taiwan's Ilan County. The Diaoyutai Islands are volcanic outcroppings, an extension of Taiwan's Datuan mountain range. Geologically, the Diaoyutais are part of an island chain which also comprises Huaping, Mianhua, and Pengjia Islands, all under the effective control of the ROC. The waters around the Diaoyutais are traditional fishing grounds of Taiwanese fishermen serving also as a source of medicinal ingredients, a haven during storms, and a base for boat repair and salvage operations. Based on historical records, the Diaoyutai Islands were first discovered, named, and utilized by Chinese. The earliest Chinese historical record that lists the island under the name Diaoyutai is titled Seeing Off with a Favorable Tailwind, written in 1403 in the early Ming Dynasty. The islands served as navigational markers en route from China to the Ryukyu Islands. In 1562, the Diaoyutais were included in Ming China's maritime defense system against Japanese pirates. In 1556, the Chinese record titled Chronicles of Japan notes that the Diaoyutais are islets belonging to Xiaodong or Minor East. Xiaodong was a name for Taiwan during the Ming Dynasty. In 1683, Qing Dynasty China's forces defeated the Taiwan-based regime established by the Ming Dynasty loyalist Zheng Chonggong. China's Qing government incorporated Taiwan and its appertaining islands into its territories. Since then, the Blackwater Trough, today's Okinawa Trough, which lies between the Diaoyutais and the Ryukyu Islands, has been recorded as the natural maritime boundary separating Qing China and the Ryukyu Kingdom. Qing-era documents recorded two instances of the Blackwater Trough. The first is situated in the Taiwan Strait, separating Xiamen from the Penghu Islands. The second, runs between China's Chiwei Islet and the Ryukyu Kingdom's Kumejima. 
Successive editions of the Qing government's records of the imperial missions to Ryukyu describe the Blackwater Trough as a boundary between China and the foreign lands. Situated to the west of the Blackwater Trough, all of the Diaoyutais were therefore historically recognized as belonging to China. The successive records of the imperial missions to Ryukyu are among the most authoritative of Qing period official documents. In 1756, in a general record of the Ryukyu Kingdom, Qing envoy Zhou Huang echoes the official records of earlier envoys, specifically stating that said trough constitutes the boundary dividing China from the outside world. In addition to their reports published in the records of the imperial missions to Ryukyu, Chinese envoys conveyed their sense of mission and outlook on the world in the form of poetry. For example, in 1808, envoy Qi Kun chronicled his trip to the Ryukyu Kingdom in Hundred Hymns in Eastern Waters, included in his poetry anthology, Eight Hymns of Sailing the Seas. In the poem titled Blackwater Seas, he writes, The vast ocean knew no boundary, so a trough has been drawn. In other poems, also titled Blackwater Seas, Deputy Envoy Fei Shi Zhang includes the notation boundary between China and foreign lands and crossing the Chinese boundary at the Blackwater Trough. Meanwhile, Imperial Mentor Pan Xiang from the Qing government's highest academic institute and well-versed in Ryukyu-related affairs, recorded in his treatise Records of Visiting Ryukyu and Scholars the Blackwater Trough is the boundary of Chinese and foreign waters. The Diaoyutai Islands are included in the 1871 recompiled General Gazetteer of Fujian. The islands are designated as under the jurisdiction of Taiwan's Kavalan sub-prefecture. At the time, the naval base at Mengjia was responsible for the defense of Kavalan, which in 1875 was renamed Ilan County. That the Diaoyutais were a part of China's territory during the Qing Dynasty was a well-known fact by China's neighboring countries, including Japan. More than two centuries ago, in a Japanese publication, the territories of China were colored red and yellow, whereas the Ryukyu Islands were in light brown. The Diaoyutai Islands, as well as Pengjia Island and Huaping Island, are colored red, the same color as the Chinese provinces of Fujian and Guangdong. Thus, it is clear from Japanese documents during the Tokugawa period that the Diaoyutai Islands were acknowledged as Chinese territory. In 1722, French missionary Antoine Gobille wrote a memoir based in part on mission records of Zhongshan by Chinese envoy Xu Baogua and conversations with Ryukyuan diplomats in Beijing. Gobille's memoir was published in 1758 in a collection of writings by Jesuit missionaries which included the map titled, Map from Taiwan's Jilong to the Ryukyu's Naha Harbor. On the map, the Chinese names of Diaoyutai, Huangwei, and Chiwei Islands are shown in French transliteration of Taiwanese. How did the Diaoyutai Islands, being Chinese territory, come to be referred by Japan as the Senkakus? In 1843, a British Navy ship sailed by the islands and observed rock formations that resembled pinnacles. The British captain dubbed the archipelago the Pinnacle Islands. In 1900, a Japanese geologist translated Pinnacle into Japanese as Senkaku. Since then, Japanese records have adopted the term Senkaku Islands, thereby masking their original Chinese identity as the Diaoyutai Islands. This does not, however, alter the fact that the islands are territory of the Republic of China. In 1879, following its annexation of the Ryukyu Kingdom, Japan set its sights on the Diaoyutai Islands. In 1885, Japan, with the intent of erecting national markers on the islands, conducted an on-site survey. 
On September 6th of that year, the Shanghai Mercury published an article titled Warning from Taiwan, which stated, in a sign betokening occupation, the Japanese have planted their flag on islands northeast of Taiwan. Japan called for a pullback. Japan in 1885, the foreign minister sent a confidential memorandum labeled For Your Eyes Only to the Home Minister, advising that the erection of national markers on the Diaoyutai Islands should be postponed to a more appropriate time, and that the matter should not be disclosed in our official gazetteer or newspapers. In 1892, the Okinawa governor wrote a memorandum to the Navy minister, noting that on-site surveys of the Diaoyutai Islands are incomplete, and since the opportunity to conduct another survey of the islands has not arrived, he requested that the Navy dispatch the vessel Kaimon to undertake such a survey. The Navy Ministry declined to do so, however, citing dangerous seasonal conditions. Three months before the outbreak of the Sino-Japanese War, a confidential memorandum written by the Okinawa governor noted, since the 18th year of the Meiji reign, when the police authorities of Okinawa Prefecture dispatched investigators no further on-site research has been performed. This was the last official document of the Japanese government on record concerning the Diaoyutais prior to the outbreak of hostilities in August 1894. It demonstrates that over the decade prior to the Sino-Japanese War, the Meiji government had conducted no further on-site exploration of the islands. This official document reveals fundamental flaws in Japan's legal claim to the islands. 所以日本要想強調釣魚台這是無主地,然後日本採取先戰,這件事情在國際法上面是沒有辦法成立的。After August 1st, 1894, Japan's military might achieved a rapid succession of easy victories in land and sea battles. On September 15th, the Japanese army decisively defeated Chinese forces at Pyongyang, Korea. On September 17th, Japan's combined fleet obliterated Qing China's Beiyang fleet. And on November 22nd, the Chinese military base at Port Arthur fell to the Japanese. Japan's victory was imminent. Japan's military strategy underwent an important transformation, starting with the launch of a new southern expansion policy. On November 26th, the Japanese foreign minister wrote to the prime minister, expressing the view that, we should not miss this opportunity to flexibly use our naval and land forces to attack Shanghai Guan, Taiwan, and Weihai Wei. Subsequently, on December 4th, Prime Minister Ito issued the policy recommendation, strategy for attack on Weihai Wei and invasion of Taiwan. This marked the launching of Japan's southern expansion policy. It planned to secretly annex the Diaoyutais and incorporate them into Okinawa Prefecture while preparing its southward military offensives. On December 27, 1894, the Home Minister wrote a confidential memorandum, Confidential No. 133, to the Foreign Minister concerning the erection of national markers on Huangwei Island and Diaoyutai Island. Home Minister Nomura argued that because past and present conditions were different, the matter of national markers should be put to the cabinet for a resolution. In his response, confidential number two, Foreign Minister Mutsu approved this proposal. 一个月后的一月十四日，日本透过秘密内阁决议，将钓鱼台跟黄鱼片面编入冲绳县。其实在此前一天，也就是一月十三日，日本的大本营也决定编成澎湖攻略部队，很明显明知政府的南京政策是经
The January cabinet decision, which neither went through the official process of approval by the Japanese emperor, nor followed by a public announcement, the outside world was unaware of Japan's secret actions amid the war. But the Okinawa prefecture government never followed through to install national markers in accordance with the cabinet's order. It was not until 1969, in reaction to a row over Daryutai sovereignty, that Okinawa authorities belatedly erected the national markers. At the time Japan secretly incorporated the Daryutais in January 1895, Qing government forces had been defeated in decisive battles during the Sino-Japanese War. Three months later, Minister for Beiyang Affairs Li Hongzhao and Japanese Prime Minister Ito signed the Treaty of Shimonoseki. China ceded to Japan the island of Taiwan together with all the appertaining islands as well as the Penghu Islands. Two months after the signing of the Treaty of Shimonoseki, on June 17, 1895, Japanese national Tatsushiro Koga applied to the Japanese government to lease the Daryutai Islands, after which the Japanese government granted him a 30-year payment-free lease. In his biography, Koga clearly stated, as the result of the timely gallant imperial victory of 1894 and 1895, Taiwan and the Senkaku Islands came under imperial rule. Thus Koga, who was the most directly involved individual, in his own writing expressed the taken-for-granted assumption that Japan had acquired the Diaoyutais as a prize of war. 甲午战争结束后的日本官方文献也将钓鱼台来历说得十分清楚当时古河市本人以及冲绳县水产官员对于钓鱼台的来历有一致的认识也就是日本当时是因为甲午战争战胜而取得钓鱼台的猎鱼 careful review of Meiji period historical documents relating to the Sino-Japanese War of 1894-1895 reveal that Japan acquired the Diaoyutais, Penghu and Taiwan as booty of war. For the next 50 years, Japan's militaristic expansionism did not end with seizure of Taiwan and the Daryutais. The next wave of military aggression on Chinese soil started in 1937. In December 1941, the Republic of China formally declared war against Japan. The ROC also declared that all treaties between China and Japan, including the Treaty of Shimonoseki, were rendered null and void. In November 1943, the leaders of the three World War II allies, the Republic of China, the US and the UK, met at the Cairo Conference. On December 1st, they issued the Cairo Declaration. It stipulated that all the territories Japan stole from the Chinese, including Taiwan, should be restored to the Republic of China. In 1945, the allies issued the Potsdam Proclamation, which reads, the terms of the Cairo Declaration shall be carried out and Japanese sovereignty shall be limited to the islands of Honshu, Hokkaido, Kyushu, Shikoku, and such minor islands as we determine. On September 2nd, Japan signed the instrument of surrender, by which it unconditionally surrendered and accepted the terms of the Potsdam Proclamation. This meant it accepted the terms of the Cairo Declaration, by which Taiwan would be restored to the Republic of China. The ROC accepted the surrender of Japanese forces in Nanjing mainland China on September 9th and of Japanese forces in Taipei, Taiwan on October 25th. Taiwan and Penghu, along with the Diaoyutai Islands, were thereby restored to the ROC.
On April 28, 1952, the ROC foreign minister and Japanese representative signed the Treaty of Peace between Japan and the Republic of China, thus formally ending the state of war that had existed between the two countries. By Article 4 of this peace treaty, Japan acknowledged that all treaties, conventions and agreements concluded between Japan and China before December 1941 had become null and void. These, of course, include the Treaty of Shimonoseki. After the peace treaty was signed and was promulgated by ROC President Chiang Kai-shek, it was registered by the ROC government with the United Nations, thus completing the formal process of making it an internationally recognized treaty. Based on the Cairo Declaration, the Potsdam Proclamation, the Japanese Instrument of Surrender, and the Treaty of Peace between Japan and the Republic of China, Japan was obligated to restore Taiwan to the ROC. Accordingly, the Daryutai Islands, which are amongst the islands belonging or appertaining to Taiwan, were likewise restored to their former legal status as Chinese territory and belonged to the ROC. Yet, by secret annexation of the Daryutais prior to the Treaty of Shimonoseki, by renaming them to Senkaku Islands shortly afterwards in 1900, and by belatedly erecting national markers in May 1969, Japan obscured the fact that they have always belonged to Taiwan. The Allied nations of the World War II era were misled and were unaware that the so-called Senkaku Islands were in reality the islands traditionally known as the Diaoyutai Islands. As a result, at the San Francisco Peace Conference in 1952, when it came to dealing with Japan's forfeiture of sovereignty over Taiwan and its associated islands, the Diaoyutais were mistakenly treated as part of the Ryukyu Islands, which were placed under U.S. trusteeship. Legally, however, U.S. trusteeship over the Diaoyutai Islands between 1945 and 1971 involved only administrative authority, not sovereignty. In 1971, the United States decided to transfer administrative authority over the Ryukyu Islands and the so-called Senkaku Islands to Japan. This development ignited the Protect Diaoyutai movement in Taiwan and in ethnic Chinese communities worldwide. The ROC proceeded to formally protest the United States decision. In response, the United States stated that it took no position on the sovereignty issue and since it had only transferred administrative rights over the islands to Japan, this action did not prejudice the ROC's sovereignty claims. The ROC Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a formal statement reiterating the ROC's stance that the Diaoyutai Islands, belonging to Taiwan, are the territory of the Republic of China. On June 17, 1971, the US and Japan signed the agreement between the United States of America and Japan concerning the Ryukyu Islands and the Daito Islands, whereby the Ryukyu Islands and the administrative rights over the Daryutai Islands were transferred to Japan. The U.S. reiterated that this transfer of administrative authority did not controvert the ROC's claim of sovereignty over the islands. On September 25, 2012, 58 fishing boats set sail from Suao Harbor in Taiwan's Ilan County, carrying 292 fishermen to reassert ROC sovereignty over the Daryutais. They broke through a cordon of Japanese Coast Guard vessels firing water cannons. In September 2012, Japanese civic groups, led by Nobel laureate in literature, Kenzaburu Oe, issued a declaration pointing out that the Daryutai Islands were annexed by Japan, taking advantage of the Qing government's weakness and inability to take effective diplomatic action. Japan should reflect on its past history of invasion and colonization. Although sovereignty cannot be divided, natural resources can be shared. In upholding this principle, 
President Ma Ying-jeou put forth the East China Sea Peace Initiative on August 5, 2012, on the 60th anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Peace between Japan and the Republic of China. President Ma called on concerned parties to replace confrontation with dialogue, put aside territorial disputes, and negotiate a code of conduct that will make possible cooperative development of maritime resources in the East China Sea. Prominent international media outlets and scholars around the world have voiced their support for the East China Sea Peace Initiative as the ideal solution to resolving sovereignty disputes concerning the Diaoyutai Islands. The principle that President Ma has laid out is a good one. We are nowhere, as far as I can tell, we're nowhere near resolution, not about sovereignty, we're not going to get to resolution of sovereignty, but to, how to, re to get to some stable situation. Well, I welcome, of course, uh, this uh, peace initiative because um, the East China Sea, in uh, my view and uh, the view of my many colleagues here in the European Parliament, is very clear. This sea must be a sea of peace and cooperation. First of all, about uh, President Ma's initiative, the fundamental principle being that the, this issue should be re resolved peacefully through agreement, through negotiations. Uh, I cannot welcome more. I entirely agree with, to this principle. The Nantian Gong Temple is the spiritual center of fishermen in Suao. The temple is dedicated to Mazu, who is popularly regarded as goddess of the sea. Nantian Gong Temple houses the world's largest statue of Mazu cast in solid gold, standing some two meters tall and weighing about 200 kilograms. Taiwan's fishing community believes that with the blessings of Mazu, Together with the government's help, they'll be able to fish freely and safely. Whether in terms of geography, geology, history, utilization, or international law, the Diaoyutai Islands, just like Huaping, Mianhua, and Pengjia Islands belong to Taiwan and are the sovereign territory of the Republic of China. Going forward, the Republic of China will continue to be firmly committed to demonstrating and safeguarding its sovereignty over the Diaoyutai Islands.